we stepped out from the ship and onto Earth. I took a deep breath and allowed the Earth air to rush into my lungs for the first time. It was heavy and dry. The female Earthling motioned to the ground with her head. Leave August here. We'll come back for him later. I bent forward and placed August's body on the ground as the female Earthling searched the horizon. Wait here. As the female Earthling stepped away, I took the few moments I had to investigate my surroundings. I shuffled across the surface and kicked up a bit of sand as I went. There was the slightest feeling of floating with each step, and I leaped a few times to gauge my decline. It was minimal, but there was definitely less gravity than on Terra. Come over here. Where are we headed? To see if anyone's home. We set out through the hot, pebble-filled sand of the desert. The colors were muted, and the sun felt warmer than on Terra. I did my best to balance excitement and dread, as the female Earthling led us toward the rising sun. Keep up. Through the sun's glare, I spotted something moving, then a few more. It was Earthlings. Many Earthlings, and they were headed in our direction. It's okay, Dean. Don't be scared. My chest pounded. Breathe. I followed the female earthling toward a large, leafless tree that seemed out of place in the desert. The earthlings waited for us underneath the large, dried-out branches. Dean, these are the Hopi. I tried not to stare, though they appeared to have the same problem with me. The earthlings whispered to one another with accusing eyes. Some seemed scared, others confused. From what the transmissions taught me, earthlings already made first contact. In fact, I had seen numerous aliens in the earth transmissions. Some were good, others horribly bad. Sometimes they were funny. And if I remembered correctly, there was one that ate cats. They seemed taken aback. That's because you just made history. Congratulations, Dean Kilmer of Terra. You've just made first contact with Earth. But I've seen many aliens in the transmissions. The how- Trust me. You're the first. An older man stepped out from the crowd and grasped the female Earthling's hand from underneath with a slight nod of the head. Then spoke to her in a language my translator could not decipher. The female earthling pointed to the sky, then toward me. I waved at the crowd. Uh, Hello. Hello, some answered back. The older man stepped in front of me and extended his hand. I grabbed it and, caught up in the moment, pulled him close and gave him a big hug. Everyone seemed to think it was quite humorous. Okay, Dean, that's enough. Welcome to Earth. The man said with a kind voice. My name is Len. Len turned and spoke to the other Earthlings in their own language. A few Earthlings walked past me and headed toward the ship. It's okay. The female Earthling assured me. They're going to take care of August. Did you know they would be here? I had a hunch. Come on, let's get out of the sun. Me, the female Earthling and the rest of the Earthlings made our way through the desert toward a hole leading underground. Inside, it was much cooler and more spacious than I could have imagined, and we all fit comfortably with room to spare. Pillows rested on woven rugs, and the walls were decorated with all types of dolls and carvings. Thick beams made from smooth wood held the walls and roof from caving in. I leaned in close to the female Earthling, Is there anything I need to know? I wish not to insult anyone. Just be yourself. You'll do fine. I propped a small pillow beneath me and made myself comfortable. From across the room, a small child stood frozen in place. I waved, but she shied away. The children think you're a sky god. I told them you're not, but they're kids. Oh, how fun. The female Earthling returned to her conversation with the older Hopi Earthling men. I again tried to make a connection with the little Earthling girl by waving. You don't have to be afraid. 
The little earthling girl stared, eyes wide. I dared to scoot a bit closer. Uh, let's try this. Oh, what's your name? The little girl giggled <laughs> slightly. Muna. Hello, Muna. Uh, my name is Dean. Hello. How old are you, Muna? Seven. Seven years old? You're almost an old lady. <laughs> oh, would you like to know how old I am, Muna? She answered with a smirk and a shrug. I am 143 Earth years old. I could feel eyes on me as I spoke, but I kept my focus on Muna. Around the little girl's neck hung a string of beads. They were bright and beautiful. Those are pretty. Did you make those all by yourself? Yes. Soon, some of the other Earthling children cautiously joined Muna's side. Wow, you are very talented. Maybe you could show me how to make one. Muna took off her necklace, slowly approached me, and slid the necklace over my head and around my neck. Thank you so much. Muna smiled and hurried back into the safety of her little friends. Uh, maybe I can make one for you then. Okay. Suddenly a woman's voice spoke from across the room. It was pleasant, but commanding. Where is it you're from, Mr. Dean? I'm from the planet Terra, I blindly answered. The owner of the voice stepped toward the center of the room. It was an older earthling woman with long, noticeable graying hair and kind eyes. Though, I determined her age more by her hair than her face. Then let me be the first to officially welcome you to Earth, Dean. I am Kaya. I stood and nodded at Kaya with a slight smile. Uh, thank you, Kaya. I I've waited my whole life to get here. In fact, I feel like I'm in a dream. I think it's fair to say we feel the same. May I ask, uh, what exactly happened to Earth? Kaya took a cleansing breath. It seems an old visitor decided to end its journey. Uh, you mean Halley's Comet? Kaya nodded in agreement. First, there was a large earthquake. The Earth shook for weeks while fire danced in the sky. Most of the creatures died. Then it snowed for many, many years. Crops failed. Chaos reigned. The children huddled in a corner and attempted to hide from Kaya's words. They say we were lucky. We were told it was much worse for those on the other side of our planet. Uh, so, the comet hit somewhere near Asia? Some say the Pacific Ocean. But it's hard to confirm. How did... You all survive. Kaya smiled. We had a friend. Kaya gently slipped a lightly stained envelope from her pocket and read the letter out loud. Dear Kaya, I hope this finds you well. I must be short and to the point, so forgive me. Within a week of this dated letter, a terrible event will take place. I can't tell you how I know, but you must prepare. Go underground, bring at least six months of supplies, and do not come out. No matter what you hear, do not come out. Never speak of this to anyone you cannot trust. Until we meet again. Kaya gazed toward the female earthling. As you can see, we received your letter. It was all I could do at the time. Let us show you how it helped. Come on. The sun lingered high above as we ventured out of the underground dwelling, across the desert, to the top of the wide hill. There, nestled in a valley, stood a quaint village. Earthlings bustled around, going about their daily routine. It seemed life was going on quite normally in the valley. Kaya stood close to the female Earthling. Once we returned to the surface, we saved almost everyone that came to us for help. They're all alive because of your letter. And so are we. Muna and her little friends ran down the hill and into the valley, filling the desert air with giggles and laughs. Careful, children. I always wondered if it got to you in time. Kaya smiled, then reached out and embraced the female earthling tightly. Horrified, the female earthling quickly shoved Kaya away. You touched my skin. Everyone froze, 
Kaya looked confused. I waited for the shrieks and blood-curdling screams from Kaya's mouth, but it never came. The death touch never took hold. Kaya was still alive. I apologize, Kaya. Usually when something touches my skin, it- Kaya stepped forward and embraced the female earthling once more. Welcome home. With that, Kaya made her way into the valley. The rest of the Hopi earthling followed leaving me and the female earthling alone at the top of the hill. I think I'm having a weirder experience than you are. (laughs) The light wind tossed the female earthling's red hair across her face, forcing her to tie it back. Do you think... I mean, what would happen if I touched... Let's not find out. I nodded in agreement, then peered into the valley. (sighs) Those earthlings down there sure are lucky. Without your letter... The Hopi wouldn't have been here to save them. Well, take it all in, because we're leaving in the morning. The female earthling patted me on the head with her gloved hand and headed into the valley. Leave? To where? As the female earthling disappeared from view, I stayed on the hill long enough to see the sky turn red as the earth's sun slid behind the horizon, long enough to hear the sound of chirping crickets and long enough to watch the moon appear above the valley. I tried to take it all in, but it's hard to do so when you're living in the moment. Some people go an entire lifetime without enjoying a sunset. Kaya startled me, but brought comfort with a warm hand on my shoulder. I've witnessed thousands of sunsets on my home planet, but none compared to this. I'm sure your planet's sunsets are just as beautiful. When you return home, you will see them with clearer eyes. I suppose you're right. But right now, this one is the greatest I have ever seen. Kaya smiled. I will agree with that. <laughs>